I remember it used to annoy me. You just I'd hear your chips all the time I, shuffling, especially when you did it in your cube at work. Yeah. Oh I, man, it's crazy that it bugs people because I love that sound. <laughs> and what I like, you should like. Yeah. Yeah. Just no. like your shit doesn't stink. Hey, no, I got your <laughs> asterisk. Sorry. Wait, don't I already have to? Because you probably already did anyway. When we talked about your God. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens. Brown paper packages tied up with string. These are a few of our favorite things. So that is from um, um, b- 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 Sound of Music. Yeah. Have you seen it or not? Probably. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> well, it came out of like 1960 it's a, it's or something. Like, okay, like. that's fair. I had I had actually never seen it, and I saw it for the first time uh, just a handful of weeks ago, actually. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe a couple months ago. Okay. But it was. It was. It was so good. It is so good, dude. Yeah. You need to. You need to. All right, I'll I'll, t- I'll check it out. It's amazing. It's a good song though. Good song. Yeah, and here's the crazy thing. You ready for this? Are you ready for this? Yeah. I'm forgetting his name, the actor that plays Magneto. Uh, yep. Young Young Magneto. Yep. Oh, Young Magneto. Yeah, Young Magneto. He's a very good looking actor. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I can picture him, but that name will never come to me so in a million years. If you were to watch, um, uh, Sound of Music. The, the dad in The Sound of Music, I'm like, obviously it's not him because this is many decades yeah. apart. However, there is not a chance they're not related because it, it absolutely, it looks like he got into a time machine, went back, filmed this, and then came <laughs> back here. It is the craziest thing in the world. So then I looked it up and see if they're related, and they're not, but there's tons of people that like, they're, they they have to be related. It's <laughs> Just crazy. Just true doppelgangers. Oh, huh? it's unreal. I'm gonna, decades of heart. I'm going to show you later. But, uh, but here we are. We want to talk about... Our favorite. Uh, yeah, things. yeah, yeah. I almost feel like we need to like prefix this that none of the things we're gonna bring up today in this podcast <laughs> this are do. sponsoring us in any way. Oh, I, I right? guess it will sound like that. Yeah, yeah, because because a lot of these things we will be like gushing about, and it's gonna sound like we're salesmen and and we're not. Nah. No, uh, the real reason behind this is because it just dawned on me as you and I kind of talk to each other that it's like a lot of times we're like. Dude, have you have you like checked out a Fitbit, man? Like, the Fitbits are cool, dude. You can find out <laughs> how much sleep you got last night and how many steps and whether or not you're too stressed out or whatever. Like, it's a cool device. We'll have all these little conversations with each other yeah. all the time about these things that we use in our daily lives. And a lot of times, like, I'll take your advice and I'll I'll get whatever you recommend and I'll check it out and and um, I agree. And I'm like, yeah. dude, why are we holding this information to just me and you when we could? Tell everybody that yeah, happens okay. to watch and listen to this podcast. And, I can dig that. And if it's something they feel like they could use in their lives, then uh, there, there cool. Then hopefully we get a sponsorship. No, not about the sponsorships. Yeah, <laughs> but, no, but yeah. no, I just think like we can make the world a better place if we uh, spread that knowledge of our experiences like. with some of these things. Yeah, the things that we use on a daily that we really like. So uh, okay. who wants to go first? I well, guess I sort of did with my Fitbit, but I'll get more into that later. I'm gonna Let's just take it from the top. Okay. Okay. Wake up in the morning. When I wake up. Oh, I did that last yeah, podcast. You know Didn't I do that exact line last podcast? Oh, that's right. Because I went. Da, la, da. Why do we say wake Man, up? Man, I don't time? know. I don't know. But the fact that it happened twice is kind of odd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're weird. So when? So I will say this, and I'm not proud of this, but the very first thing I touch in the morning is my iPhone. It is. Oh. It is, and I hate that. So I have a couch wow. next to my bed. I'm actually really glad you said iPhone. <laughs> Well, the other thing's not up for sale. <laughs> so, so yeah, you, can't, you can't lobby a softball like that, dude. Um, oh. No, see, now my mind is Sorry, swimming. sorry. iPhone's great. Yes, go. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, am I just a blank? So the iPhone, I reach over and I just check. I'll, I, maybe I'm checking a video or actually, believe it or not, I'm checking Discord. We talked about this last time. Um, but that's the first thing I, I reach over and I and I grab that and I mm. just check it out, check it real quick. It's a bad thing to do, especially if it's like three in the morning. But uh, that's yeah, that's definitely. what I do first. Definitely bad if it's three in the morning. Yeah, I I'm with you that 
it's probably the first thing I touch when I wake up, but that's just to stop the alarm from going off because I use it for my alarm. Mm. And I do not look at it after that. When I get out Smart. of bed, when I get out of bed, I pick it up. Um, I have a wireless charger for it that I really like. So now uh, I, have, I have my phone. It has this ring on the back. It's MagSafe, they call it. Yep. And there's chargers that just stick to it. The magnet. Boop, you got it, too. Yep. Uh, now that I love. That's yeah. not even something that was uh, on my list. Yeah, I knew I'd start coming up with stuff yeah, as, know, we, as we get rolling. But, um, yeah, there's a MagSafe charger, charger. So the first thing I do in the morning after I hit my alarm is I slide it off. You kind of have to, like, push it yeah. off, slide it off. And then, yeah, and then I get up uh, and I don't look at my phone until usually... Until usually, like, my coffee's being brewed. That's good. You know what I mean? That's good. Like, See, I get my routine going. Yeah. You know? I, I look at it too early. And like I said, more often than not, sometimes I sink into it at 3 a.m. That's no good. Um, but when, after that, it's time to pop into the shower. Now, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. you, you, you loofah or no loofah? No, I don't. No, no what? Loofah. Yeah. You're outside of your mind. I have loofahs. They're hanging there in the shower, but it's right there in front of you. Yeah, You're not using I don't know. it. I mean, one's it's probably my wife's. Is that uh, do you share a loofah with your wife? Uh, not, we have a couple in this there. This is but... not where we were planning on going, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but, we are. I'm no, I don't. I don't loofah. The, the, I, I get the. I, I get that they're great and stuff. How do you just, lather up? I rub the soap in my hands. Your stupid and then hands. I rub it on my body. Nobody wants to know how I shower. Why are we getting into this? I'm not. I'm just talking about the equipment in My there, body dude. is totally clean. You're taking a prison shower. No loofah, nothing. <laughs> just hands and... That's, that's, that's the a... line. <laughs> if, if you don't have a loofah, you might as well be in prison. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, so, man. do you... What, is it a bar of soap or is it liquid soap? At least it's, it's a liquid yeah, soap. Yeah, it's a liquid. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. At least you're not a complete savage. So, <laughs> Jeez, I, <man. laughs> The judgment that's happening already. I'll tell you what, Holmes... Use a loofah. I'll I give it spit. a go. I'll get my you own. Won't... I'll get my own loofah because I don't know who the ones that are hanging in the shower belong to. You get get your. How many people use your shower? <laughs> well, I used so, to. The kids yeah. used to use the shower. You, right. know? It, uh... you use a loofah. You'll never go back. You'll never okay. go back. Well, you you lather it up. And okay. You, it's, First it's tip of the day, loofah. Yeah. See, you right. you started this by saying I've given you advice and I've always been right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So loofah it up. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, now you mentioned coffee. I gotta tell you, dude, I love my Keurig, dude. I do. I I, I love because yeah. it, I love the convenience of it. And uh, I'll typically I'll throw a mug in there and get the coffee going, and I just leave. I just walk away. Yeah. And I come back to it, but it's typically doing that while I'm feeding the dogs. Yeah. No, I do the same thing, but it's just a singular singular dog, um, so that I can typically get that done before my coffee's done brewing. But yeah, I do have a Keurig as well. We used to do the whole pot and and the grounds and the little filter bag and and then yeah, Keurig is definitely easier, especially like if my wife and I want something different, which we we typically don't. I think we have this like caramel, I don't even know the brand, but it's 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 a bit of caramel flavor in the coffee, which we like. And then I know you don't drink creamer, but we discovered uh, and it was when we were on the whole thirty, and we had to we were creamer people, but most creamer have sugars in it and stuff. Um, so when we were on the Whole30, we discovered this creamer nut pods, and they have different uh, flavors. We have hazelnut is what we like. So nut pods, it's like a, it's like a hazelnut milk, basically, and uh, and that's what we use as creamer in our in our in our coffee when we yeah, actually right. do the curing. Now, bigger question: What is it going into? Just a regular old coffee cup mug thing? Oh, what do you what do you what are you brewing into? I was into? gonna say my mouth. No, what are you brewing it into, man? Uh, so it's a regular. I use a regular coffee cup. Yikes. So I got two. <laughs> hey, you were gonna judge. I'm gonna turn it around. <laughs> you say yikes. Yeah. I got two main coffee. Well, three main coffee cups that I use. One is uh, of my daughter's college. Um, so I never. That's mm -hmm. never gonna be on stream. It's typical ceramic. Typical ceramic. Okay. It's, uh, pff, typical, dude. This thing is quality. Then I got this okay. great blue M&M coffee cup, and then I have M&M, one... &M, like the wrapper or no. the candy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Slim Coffee. Yes, I'm the real coffee. Shut up. Ain't no other. <laughs> oh, it is It is the candy, bro. Okay. It's the candy. Oh, uh, man. Okay. <laughs> Odd choice, but okay. Uh, no, it's not. 
If you saw this thing, it's beautiful. Okay. It is a real. So what qualifies a good coffee mug for you is the exterior graphics. Not and... just the graphics, but the quality of uh, like the porcelain and okay. uh, like like for example, like the one of my daughter's college is really thick. It's like kind of heavy, even when there's nothing in it. Mm -hmm. It's just very good quality. And honestly, same thing with the with the with the the M and M one. But then I got my Kevin Bubbles Malone refrigerator, Jimmy Manaduga mug, and that's for streams only. You say that for the streams only. Okay. Yeah. Here's the deal with me with coffee is I'm mm. a sipper. Like, I take upwards to two hours to drink my coffee. Therefore, I can't put it in a ceramic mug like you do because it would be it's cold in, like, less than 20 minutes. I finish it pretty fast. Yeah, so yeah. I need mine to last. So I've invested in a yeti it's like a stainless steel like insulated one you know yeti they make the coolers that like can keep ice for a month yeah. in the desert yeah. you know what i mean in the in the summer so i have a yeti coffee mug it's 16 ounces dude i'll mess around so <laughs> 16 ounces of coffee and that's how much i brew that's a morning. lot of coffee yeah it's a, it is lots of coffee i mean we're pushing upwards to i mean that's two cups Right, I guess. and so that's 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 a double that's dose. A coffee, it's a double dude. dose. I get caffeinated, animated, mm -hmm. redstone mm -hmm. innovator. My behavior's mm -hmm. crazy. Can't face me. Impulse never lazy. Tango, why would you betray me? Not my. Po yeah, okay. You know the. Verse. I was into it, uh, man. You were you were jamming anyway. Yeah. I haven't busted that in a while. So <laughs> yeah, so I get my Yeti, and I can literally, dude. It's been I've been I start streaming at nine a.m. and I'll brew that I'll brew that up at like eight thirty or whatever. Sometimes I'll be streaming and I and I take my last sip and i look at the clock it's 11 a.m dude <laughs> and my last sip not cold wow so yeah that thing I mean, vouch, too, isn't time. it too hot for a while uh yeah my yeah i might that's why i brew it at like 8 30 and i don't actually take my first sip until closer to nine is that like right? i let it sit like a good See, 15 I, minutes or so i brew a full cup and i i get it i drink it fast get in my belly because I want that coffee running through my veins yes, as soon yeah. as possible. Yeah, I need to drip. I need to drip feed mine because it's six. <laughs> it's sixteen ounces, and I would Wait, just. You need. You need to hook up a. Yeah. A hydro like um like the hamster hamster feeder thing here, so you could work and there's. there's yeah. You know yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's so deal so yeah, I mean yeah, I'm with you on the Keurig. I'm with you on I I I, I got to have that. I got to have that just because I'm such a slow drinker. But Yeti, Yeti's I mean, it's not cheap. You know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend. You know, oh everybody should get a Yeti because like that. You know, it's it's it's, it's, it's it's quality, but you pay for what you get. You know what I mean? It's it's not it's not cheap. I do have some Yetis. They're not cheap right now, but you know they're they're not cheap Yeti. God, that was just the wow. Worst. I'm sorry. I took the wow. scenic, I took the I, scenic I saw, route. On I that. saw. I took the scenic route on that joke. I saw when your brain was like, "Am I really going to do this <laughs> yes, joke?" Yes, I fought with myself. Yeah, and there was a hesitation, <laughs> and, and your brain's like, "Well, we can't turn back now. We started." Yeah, I saw that. And yeah, it's like man, it's happening. And then I did it. And my brain's like, "We should have turned back." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Absolutely, man. I do have one of the. Well, I have one. I don't know. It's a hydro flask. I don't know. Okay. Actually. Wait a minute. Do you have a Yeti Hydro Flask okay, with you today? I don't think that this Skizzle is... Man, have you brought props? I may have brought a prop, Helms. Have you brought props to the, the this, podcast? Let me this tell is, you something. This is why, you know, I started... I always feel a little bad for the audio-only people, and then I don't because I realize they're going to listen to this and they're still going to watch the video, and that's a double dip. That's, uh, that's a double dip. You think we? Th you think that's a coincidence that we bring props we sometimes? You think it's a coincidence Skizzle so, Man puts uh, things, overlays on screen? Ready? Ice cold. Yeah. It looks like a nice mug. Uh, so that's not like last a, night. Last night. Ice in there from last night? Well, still? ice this morning. But if okay. I was li from last night. But it could have been. Yeah. Reduce. So now, now, right now, and I don't have one. The, the big rave is these Stanley mugs. You know? Can't say Stanley uh, Cup. That's a hockey trophy. Stanley mugs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That actually confused me for a while. Me uh, too. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, everybody's raving about these these Stanley mugs, and I, I, I'm assuming it's the same kind of deal where they're just like super crazy insulated, and they they have to be. I don't otherwise I don't understand the uh, the raving um, for them. But mine, I I have mine too. I I always hide it for the camera, so I'm gonna do a just a very yep easy. This is what I use, Hydro Spark, and this has got God, we this guys we are not sponsored. I, I, that's why I prefix. It really this whole sounds like that. Yeah, this We're is not. what I use, and as far as insulating, pretty good. 
pretty, pretty good. Pretty yeah, I, I got a feeling that Yeti would, would kick its butt, maybe even Stanley. But what this has is a battery in the bottom that's actually a weight. And I, uh, the battery's dead right now. Don't yeah. judge. Uh, but uh, when I drink, it will. I set it down, and it reweighs itself, and it can tell how many ounces I drink. Yep. And so when, when I'm really trying to keep track of my uh, water intake for the day to see if I'm getting enough, um, I can do that. It, like, syncs to the phone. There's an app. Like, it wirelessly transmits, you know, oh, he just drank three ounces. And then it adds up for the day. And at the end of the day, and be like, hey, I actually hit 100 ounces today or whatever I'm going for. So, um, yeah, I like this. I just sometimes get too lazy to recharge the battery that goes in the bottom. Um, but other than that, yeah, this thing's pretty dope. They are pretty cool. I have yeah. one of those as well. I have a bigger one. And it does the same thing. Does yours, your battery thing, does it light up when it? Yeah, it lights yeah. up. And so, yeah, it'll, it, it, when I have the battery charged, it'll be sitting on my desk and it's like, he hasn't, he hasn't taken a sip of me in 15 whole minutes. Bloop, 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 yeah. bloop. See? And I'm like, oh, better take a sip. And it reminds me, it keeps me on track, you know, to I keep drinking. I don't use mine, dude. I don't need the government tracking my water into, I'm just kidding. I'm not a, I'm not a crazy person. You're me, man. I'm not a crazy person. I, uh, <laughs> I do, I actually did enjoy using that and I, I didn't, um, intentionally stop using it. Uh, it li literally got to a point where it was like, I, I felt like I was always recalibrating it and that, that whole thing. Anytime it was empty, you got to recalibrate. Mm -hmm. And I just sort of fell off with it. Sure, Plus, sure. And I didn't see, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that there's no value in that. I just didn't understand it. However, I bet you, I think I could actually flip it and argue for it because I have gotten to the end of the day and been like, I've had maybe a glass of water today. That's not yeah. good. That is so bad. Yeah. There's days like that too. And um, the way I combat that, and plus the fact that we drink the coffee and we'll, we'll be dehydrated, is I have these electrolyte packets. And I actually don't know the brand. So I, I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, no sponsor here, obviously, but I don't know the brand. Anyway, they're packets. That, <laughs> they're, you just dump the powder in your water, your ice water, and then yeah. boom, you just get this injection of electrolytes. And that usually helps me out. Like a lot of times I'll get like, when it, whenever you get dehydrated, you can get like brain fog and headaches and stuff. And I can usually feel it, you know, during the day. And I'm like, as soon as I start to feel that, like that little bit of headache or brain fog, I'm like, oh, I need electrolytes. I just know it. And so I'll grab this this packet and, and pop it in. You can you, you can take like two a day. Yeah. Like, and that's like the max. You don't want to overdo it, apparently. Um, but I usually get away with just like one a day. And so that's another one of my little tricks. That's to, smart. That's tricks smart. to stay hydrated. Tricks to keep my electrolytes where they're supposed to be, <laughs> I guess. And it's good. It actually, right. it's tasty because you, you get tired of drinking just water. You know, sometimes you want a little flavor that you savor. <laughs> How do you expect me to move on and not finish it? <laughs> I got my Kobe Bryant no look confusion maker. There it is. There, there sorry, is. you got you can't get me going. It's like gonna be that. one of those podcasts, apparently. You would think I just had 16 ounces of, of uh, I, you'd, coffee out of my Yeti. I know. It's been actually it's afternoon now. I know. And, but, Second wind. All right. More favorite things that we use. Yeah. Okay. I'm pointing at what's got to be one of your favorite oh, things. Oh, you want to go to tech already? I okay. Do. Oh, are you opening a can of worms? Uh, I'm specifically pointing at that keyboard. Custom built keyboard. Um, I will have to just give you the info on that to put in the description because my it's it's some sort of like Frankenstein mashup of the most fancy mechanical keyboard parts my son could conjure up. Um, my son is a mechanical engineer, and he really loves custom keyboard making mechan of the mechanical kind. And so he did a ton of research on uh, switches and. Yeah, other stuff that goes along. I don't know, I don't know the ins and outs of it. So anyway, when I, when he was starting to get into it, I could tell he knew what he was doing. Uh, it's a very expensive hobby, by the way. Yeah. Uh, like he was spending five hundred bucks uh, to make a keyboard, and I'm like, geez. And then he's like, yeah, but check it out. And he'd hand me his keyboard. And he's like, just go ahead, tap a couple keys. Yeah. And I'm like, the the second I started like kind of playing around with the keys on on one that he had made, I was like, this is amazing. No, like this is. is this makes my fingers happy. I'm telling you, you here, know? here's the best way for me to explain the difference. Like when I type on that keyboard, it's the same thing as there's people who actually like keyboards, not these kinds, but musical keyboards, right? Think of a really weak, like like cheap keyboard. Mm, yeah. And you can and those those keys are so flimsy and so there's like nothing to them. Then when you get the high quality keyboards, they got this resistance and they almost have some sort of weird, weird threshold during the push that lets you know the push is done. It's like yeah. it's almost it's crazy. That's what that one does. Every single yeah. keystroke feels like if I if I could have one that were 
geared to my giant mitts, I would like because when I type on that one, I feel like you I'm like can. This. I try to, but I feel like I'm just like, oh, you mean yeah. you can have a made? No, you yeah. can you can have it made with bigger keycaps and stuff. I'm pretty sure that's amazing. So yeah, uh, yeah, I, I I told him uh, he asked me a ton of questions. You know, he's like he had me test like these different like weights, I guess, and so some of them you had to press harder, some lighter for that feedback to happen. And I found the sweet spot, and he made it. I can't even remember what it was. Um, also, I I lost the numpad off it, but on purpose, because what was happening was because my keyboard was so big and I wanted my left arm straight out from my shoulder, you know, to come down like perfectly um, from my body, that what would happen was the keyboard, I'd have to keep my mouse off to the right a little bit. And because I was kind of like over like that, I had one arm straight in front of me, but the other one skewed out to the side underneath my right shoulder blade would cramp up during the day. Oh. And so I was like, oh, I know why that is. I need to get my arms back together and perpe- not perpendicular, but squared up with my body, right? So they're coming straight down from my shoulders and square. The only way to do that, if I lose the numpad off the keyboard, so they're like called a 70% or whatever at that point. Um, and you can actually lose the function keys too, but I, I wanted my function keys. And then now you can have the mouse next to your keyboard and still keep your arms straight in line with your shoulders. Yeah. And that's what I was going for. And has it been a pain without a numpad? Yes, but you deal with it. <laughs> well, I think it's better you, than the it's better than the cramps I got under my right shoulder blade because know, my arm was askewed. Well, you, you got know? me thinking. Like, I wonder if I'm dealing with because sometimes during the streams I'll start to get a very similar pain to what you just described. Mm-hmm. And, I'm like, am I sitting crooked or something? And so yeah. maybe that's well, yeah. I mean, if your keyboard has forced your mouse to be off to the side, or I mean, you can you can slide over and try to have it, but you're still kind of like skewing out like wings, you know. And, and I felt like I just need them right in front of me so I can relax my shoulder blades. And the only way to do that was to lose a numpad. Okay. And so people give me crap all the time about the fact that you don't have a don't have a number pad, but that's what it's done for me. It's become a more ergonomic thing. Yeah. And I'm like, I have a Stream Deck, which we could get into as well. Oh yeah. That. I can press a button on my stream deck and my stream deck is a numpad. So I don't I still have a numpad if I want it. You know. How is that a numpad? We're not you know. let's leave tech. We'll come back to tech. <laughs> uh I got something I like. One. I have two stream decks. You're uh, looking at the wrong one. You're talking about that one. Yeah. Okay. Um I got I got something. Let's okay. Le- let's leave tech and then let's come back well, to yeah, tech. Well, yeah, we'll come back to it because we could spend three hours on it. You know me. I know. We don't have that. And we'll time. come back to it, dude. Yeah. Okay. okay? I know you're gonna be Jonesing. I've been trying to get you to purchase a certain clothing line. Yeah. And people who are listening to us now, as soon as I say this brand, some people are going to go, ugh. And other people are going to go, ah. You know what I mean? Lululemon, dude. Mm-hmm. That is that is the best. I mean, I don't, This it's the most expensive gym Every time you can I buy. walk past that store in the mall, I look over and it's filled with pretentious people. Oh, shut I'm up. Just kidding. I'm, just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No, I know. No, every, every time I walk past it in the mall, I'm like, I, Skiz has been telling me for ages I need to go in there. But here's here's the thing is because I am constantly on this journey of trying to lose this this weight that I gained during the pandemic. I always think I don't want to buy it now because in three months from now, it ain't going to fit anymore because I'm totally losing 30 pounds <laughs> in the next three months. You know what I mean? So buy I keep, it now. I keep putting it off. Yeah. yeah buy, buy it, it now. now and use it to lose the weight. And I'm it, with well, you. Buy it now. But not just that. If you If you end up losing the weight, then... Buy something new. Don't you dare yeah. say if. <laughs> when. Then buy something go. new. Yeah. Trust me on this. It is the yeah, most. Yeah, but isn't it like $500 for a pair of shorts? Dude, it's that is on a good day. It, no, it really, <laughs> it's it's not that much. But it is honestly like a pair of Ugh. shorts is a, a good pair. It might run you up to like about one twenty one forty. <gasps> but but it's the cheapest clothing in the world because it will last you the rest of your life. It is the craziest yeah. thing in the world. I told you about that pair that that girl brought me when I was when we were crossfitting years ago, and uh, she was I didn't even I had never even heard of Lululemon. It was a relatively new company, and she was working for them. And she's like, "I'm gonna bring you some clothes." So she brought. I had no idea that how nice this was. I, I considering how expensive, and so she's like, "Wear this for a week or two, and let me know what you think." And I I did, and I was just like, "This these are amazing." That was a billion years ago. <clears throat> Those things have gone on. I don't know, 15, 20, 25, 30 hikes. They've gone probably well over like two or 300 miles on walks. They've gone through hundreds, if not thousands of workouts, like over the this long period of time. Mm-hmm. It's like they're brand new. It's like they're brand new. Wow. I can't, I do not understand. I've talked about this in this podcast before too. I don't know how they did this. I don't know what voodoo is in this fabric. 
it's not only like brand new, it is equally as comfortable. Like it, I don't, I bro, I don't get it, but that's what they do. That's what Lululemon wow. does, man. They All make right. the most incredible. So that's that's one that those shorts are one of my favorite things. I swear we didn't do this podcast to try to get sponsorships. That no. was totally a joke, but no. I mean they can reach out if they want. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's stay on the fitness thing for just a minute, just yeah, just yeah. a little bit. Um, so I did talk about Fitbit. This has actually been great because I, when when I'm going through these phases, which I I, I will acknowledge, I do have my phases of being in it to win it. And, and not in it to win it, we'll say. Um, I, I do try to hit 10,000 steps a day. I, I, I like, I had just that's my goal, you know. And my Fitbit makes me want to hit that goal because at 10,000 steps, it vibrates and shoots off fireworks. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> and, and it's just, it's just that little dopamine hit that I, I, I need to, you know, uh, let's see where I'm at today. Um, come on now. Let's see. Come on. Where are we at? We are at, what do you think? What do you think I'm at today? How you know, steps? we've been sitting here recording two 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 podcasts already, right? And <laughs> and I was sitting here like trying to edit, but not editing. How earlier. many steps have you taken today? Yeah, how many steps do you think I've taken today? Uh seven. I'm kidding. You've taken. I'm thinking. Let me think. You say your goal is to hit ten thousand. My goal is to hit ten thousand. Oh, we went on a walk and this morning. You sneaky son of a. Dang it, busted. Yeah. We Still w- go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I would say you're probably around twenty seven hundred. 11,426. What? How many steps? Did and you... I'm still going to the gym after this. How many steps would you do on the walk? I have no idea. I, I, Come could on. Look at my, I could look at my phone and see. What did you do beside the walk? Um, I had a, an event that I went to at my daughter's school. Oh, if you did. Okay, yeah. I forgot So about I was that. out and about for that. A okay. lot of walking there from parking lot to the, the field where they shot the rockets sure. off and walking around and, and all that kind of stuff. So I got some more steps there. And then I'm going to go to the... I'm gonna go to the gym later and hit the treadmill for 30 minutes straight. So I might, I might be breaking 15,000 today, yo. Yeah, but 11,000. I'd really like to know how many you get from the walk we did. Okay, well I'll have to look it up while you brag about some sort of fitness item. I don't have any fitness items. Sure to you brag do. About. No, sure you well, do. Well, ab mat. There you go. I love my ab mat. There you go. I knew that was on. So an the ab list. mat's a neat thing. An ab mat. Yeah, explain what that does. is. I'll look right at the camera. You and I, we can go over there and play on his little thing. Ad mats. <laughs> well, it did sound are... good. <laughs> Jeez. I I'm said, just looking at my steps, I said people. play on your little thing, not play with your little thing. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sorry. Worse. Okay, we'll put an asterisk on it's this. one of these days. So, uh, Okay, I have your answer. You th- want it? You see, want it? I'll talk to you in a bit. 7,000 steps on our walk alone. That's not bad. Yeah, that's that pretty good. I did a minimum of 7,000. I did more because I, the- I walked you all the way home like a gentleman. Yeah, but here's the thing. Is uh, your legs are longer. <laughs> <laughs> so we're even. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. That's, yeah, that's one of the perks of being a short guy. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. We do twice as many steps as you tall You're folks. So lucky. <laughs> um, all right. So the ab mat is uh, like, it's almost like it's a cushiony material and it is designed to completely contour, like, like contour to your lumbar. And when you do, it's used for sit-ups. So you mm-hmm. sit on the ground, you put the ab mat behind you, you bend back over. And what it does is it basically completely opens up your spine to the natural curvature of your spine. So when you're doing a sit-up from it, it's sort of that full mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, that's one of my favorite things. Me and too. It just feels so much better in yeah. doing sit-ups. It does. Yeah. If I do sit-ups without it, I get it. I, yeah. I get pain that is not muscle bound. And the thing is, like, I've tried to use other items around the house to substitute an ab mat, like a pillow or no dice or something. No Nothing dice. compares. Yeah, I own like three of them. Literally, the ab mat. I own two. Yeah, I keep I keep one in the studio so that uh, just throughout the day I can go bust out some reps. You know, yeah. like I have a nice uh, workout mat that I keep down on the floor just in the other room behind us. And, uh, you know, I'll go to, like, import a video into Adobe Premiere, and while it's, like, taking its time to to bring in the audio tracks, and what is it called when it's it tells you what it's doing? The Any, peak files. Yeah, it's doing the peak files. Generating think, peak files. Yeah, basically, it's, like, I think it's just, like, storing it in cache or I don't know, whatever. Anyway, when it's doing that, it takes some time, and I I just go bust out some reps. You know, I just it's right there. I'll just go bust out, like, 20 sit-ups or whatever, and, and just so I can get them done during the day. You know, because good trying to do the uh, the day of the year kind of challenge thing. So today's like 65 or yeah, something. Yeah, I got it. So. I, I was right there with you, man, killing it. And I'm way I got sick. Shingles, shingles set you back, set right? Yeah. Way back. Yeah. 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 I'll get back. So I've been doing that. Um, I think I missed 
uh, two days so far of the whole year, That's which great. which does suck that I missed two because uh, I'm a completionist and I was really hoping to be 100. percent But like sometimes these days get away from you, you know, like mm-hmm. you just get so busy you blink and then all of a sudden it's like way too late at night to try to bust a workout out, you know, 60 reps of everything, you know, because we were we were doing push ups, mm-hmm. sit ups, and squats. Yep, and and whatever day it was, that was the number. So yep. if it was the first of the year, we just did one. But you fast forward, if you had stayed yeah. 45, you're doing 45 yeah, was, each. The first couple of weeks of, of like the year, I was like, I was like, man, this is easy. And lately I'm like, ooh, I got to really plan these reps out because I can't do all of them in one go yeah. anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think I, I had to stop around 45 or something. I don't remember what it was. I, that's when around when I got sick. <clears throat> so I had to stop for a bit and I'm going to come back, but, um, I would always do them all in one shot. Not, not entirely unbroken, especially the push ups. Mm-hmm. And not to mention I had, you remember, I actually ended up having some sort of, uh, uh, some strain in my, in my, my abs so that the push ups were killing me. So I had to do the other stuff and not that. And then I came back to that and I was modifying and whatever. Anyways, I just was always just trying to get it done because it, like you said, I would blink and I'd be like, it's after six and I haven't even started. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So I was always trying to do it kind of first thing in the morning, but I will say this homie. Another thing I was using that is one of my favorite things is the wedges. So the way my, like my, my hips are built and more specifically my ankle mobility, I can't do a proper squat um, without falling backwards. Right, so if I go right, down, I remember at the gym you yeah. always had problems with squats. It's the worst. I hate yeah. it, so, especially especially when I would have like a barbell on my back. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I you you need to be flat footed, and the weight needs to be traveling down from your frontal plane all the way down through your heel. That's the premise of a Olympic lift, and uh, squatting is really no different. It's the same same premise. Keep it all centered. But if I do that, I fall backwards. So the only way to do it is to compensate by bringing my knees forward, which is bad for your knees. I don't want to do that. So I have these wedges that are specifically for people like me who don't have the mobility, no matter how much you work on it, um, to be able to just go to a flat-footed squat and not fall backwards. And all it really is is like a little cheese wedge. It just like it's mm-hmm. just a little wedge, and there's different sizes. It's just a little, just gives a little, a little wet, little lift to your heel. So as you come down all that weight, it's so much harder to fall back on because you're yeah. you're on that wedge. So I have those. That's that's one of my favorite because I, I. Turns out I've hated squats my whole life, and now I have those, and I really like doing them. Nice, because my because squats have been historically for me, um, they've always come with a component of anxiety. I don't I don't want to mm. keep falling on my ass over and over again yeah. in the gym, and I don't want to I want to get through this workout, and I don't want to constantly be like, oh, I almost fell again. You know what I mean? So now I have these wedges, and I can just go. That's awesome. Oh, man. It is. That's awesome. You don't have to use them. So. No, I, I, yeah, my squats, I actually love doing squats. Yeah. I've always been really good at squats. I think it goes back to, this wasn't meant to turn into a workout uh, thing, but anyway, <laughs> back in high school, uh, I was a basketball player and I, I'm short, but I still wanted to dunk. And I realized early, well, you know, there's, there's guys out there that are shorter than me that can dunk. You know what I mean? And there was one in the NBA who was my size, I think, 5'8", and that was uh, Spud Webb. Um, and I'm not sure if Muggsy Bogues could dunk. He was even shorter. Anyway, I knew I knew it was possible, right? But I was going to have to work. And so I'd get on those those machines where you're kind of like your legs are uh, up in the air, your back's like down on a on a wet on a ramp, and you load the plate up in the air with tons of weight, and then you push it up with your legs, you know. And I wouldn't just push it up with my legs. I would throw it. I would thrust it up. So it would actually like disconnect from my feet, and then I'd have to catch it. And that was just getting that explosiveness uh, of the body to push that much weight. And that was me pushing myself off the ground, basically. Mm -hmm. And I practiced that. And I I worked out so hard doing that that, like, I got pretty good quads. You know what I mean? Like, my quads were were buff and and the calves and everything that go into play too because i would i would push with my feet and push forward and it would mm. get my calves at the same time so i practiced i literally practiced like or worked out to to be able to dunk and then i dunked and broke my wrist so it didn't matter yeah but yeah anyway <laughs> so yeah that's Sucks. that's how that went down all right let's move on because that was a lot of workout talk uh what happens after you work out you get hungry let's talk about <laughs> food because now i'm hungry um <laughs> One of my favorite things in the kitchen. My wife, my wife dominates the kitchen. We know that. I'm not the cook of the family. Mm-hmm. My wife's an amazing <clears throat> cook. Um, but 
one device I know how to use really well. Microwave. No. <laughs> Microwaves for noobs. <laughs> air fryer. Oh, the yeah. The air fryer is one of the best yeah, inventions on the is. planet, dude. Really I am is. telling you. We have one. I love the air fryer. So we started, because we weren't sure, we started with just some generic air fryer, and then we found ourselves using it so much that now we've upgraded to the Ninja. <laughs> the Ninja. <laughs> the, you heard the brand Ninja, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like top-of-the-line kitchen gadgetry. I thought it was just right? blenders. No, they have an air fryer, and that's what we're using now. And it's top of the line air fryer. Uh, and I absolutely love it, dude. Like um, I mentioned, like we we had chicken salad for lunch. I don't think I mentioned that today, maybe yesterday or the other podcast. But um, we had chicken salad for lunch but, and we needed to, to heat up the chicken, throw in the air fryer. We throw the, the chicken in the air fryer. So we got this nice air fried chicken to put on our on to top oh, our salad. Wow, OK, with. Uh, and we use it for like everything, dude. Everything. The we air fryer, man. We don't use ours for enough, then. I, we use it for fries. That's always like Dude, a bag of frozen fries. You put anything in that. <laughs> My wife, uh, one morning, she put a bagel and then cracked an egg on top of the air fryer, uh, on top of the bagel in, in the air fryer, and fr air fried it. What? And it was like the most amazing breakfast bagel sandwich ever. Dude, you, you got to get creative. So if I take a, sh a, a, a piece of... <laughs> I heard, I heard what I almost <laughs> said there. If I take a piece of sourdough bread and I put it in there and I start it, is it gonna like toast it? It like toasts it, toaster? yeah. Yeah, it'll toast it. Yep. And here I'm toasting it in a toaster like, like a, a chunk. Noob, yeah. Well, I have to. What sucks is my my bread is too big for my toaster, so I have to like flip it and hold it, and then the center's hotter than it needs to be. <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah. I can just throw it in there then. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Or even go. with an egg, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that was I when when she did that. I'm like, "You're brilliant." I didn't know that was a thing. I thought, yeah. okay, all yeah, right. dude, a lot, you can use it for a lot. That's chicken what I'm nuggies, get on there. Oh, chicken nuggets are the best in there, man. Um, so, yeah, what would we, happen if you put veggies in there? Yeah, I'm sure you could air fry veggies, no problem. See that? See how neither one of us knows? That's not good. I'm sure my wife does. <laughs> I'm sure my wife does. I, I don't. I don't pay attention to that process. I say because it it's veggies. But That's well, typically, saying. typically, uh, when we're cooking stuff like that, the healthy stuff, we have to do it the normal way because. We eat differently than our kids. Our kids won't eat the way we do. And so, therefore, there's always chicken nuggies. Yeah. There's always mozzarella sticks. There's Ooh, what always... if you put a mott stick in there? Oh, the mozzarella sticks in the air fryer is the best. What happens to it? It fries up perfectly, dude. It, everything you used to do in those greasy fryers, air fryers taking their place, and you don't have to deal with the grease anymore. So if you put a mott stick in there, what, how does it come out? I don't really understand. It comes out perfect. The middle's all nice and melted, and the outside, and the outside's nice all and... crispy, golden brown. Is it just is it just a, a like a mott stick, or is there like got like the breaded stuff on it? Yeah, it's the breaded stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're thinking. Oh, you're thinking just straight like cheese stick. I yeah, am. that would just straight up melt in there. Put it on something, maybe you'd be all right. But anyway, <laughs> what about a hot dog? Yeah, you can do hot dogs. This is <laughs> you can milk anything with nipples. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this is. I feel like that's where we're going with this. You're, you're gonna start asking for every single ingredient of the world. And I'm gonna say yes. Do it. Put it in there and find what about out. An ice cube. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, sure it'll melt it and lickety split. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. So I do have an air fryer and I do want to use it some more. You should now I especially do. Yeah. But I do. I I actually enjoy cooking though. Like you got one of these days. Ain't nothing dude, wrong with that. Oh, you want to know what I have? <laughs> Follow wrong with that. <laughs> Here's what I have. I have a um I have a I think it's called a what's it called? Like a like a thing? It's like a grinder, it's a smasher. There's a word. I it's a thing for what I make my guacamole in it. Oh, okay, and like it's a like little a, oh, stone a pumel, peg thing? Pummel like a, a stone and Yeah, I got you. Like a pummel. Do you have like the stone bowl as well? I do. Like you're a full blown guac maker. Yes. And like they could something. use you at Chipotle. They could, dude. <laughs> but it's but it, here's the thing. If I were if you were to hold this stone thing, you'd be shocked at how heavy it is. Uh so it's nice. And I got the the pummel thing. I don't see what I mean. What's it called? That's all right. But you know what I'm talking about. You're just comment farming anyway. I know. That's what we're that's what we're doing, man. <laughs> Everybody, what's seven plus four? <laughs> so so that's so I will do the the guac in there or whatever. But mm -hmm. in order to prepare that thing, that was a whole process, dude. Like when you get it, it still probably has dust in it and stuff from the manufacturing. So I was like, 
I thought I could just rinse, rinse it out and do whatever. I read through the instructions. I'm like, whoa, I am so glad I read through this. First of all, don't let soap ever touch it. Ooh. Never put soap on it. Interesting. And then. The, oh, because it soaks into the stone. It soaks into okay. the stone, homie. Calcifies, then, maybe? I, I Other smart people words? I, <laughs> <laughs> seven plus five, maybe? <laughs> No, this is so I had to like do all these spices and grind it into it and like mm-hmm. then like put hot water and pour it out, let it Ooh. air dry, and then do more spices and grind it okay, in. Okay, okay. And so, like at any given time, no matter how clean or dry this thing is, it's got this like aroma of spice to it, which is kind of cool. Then it just gets better with time as you do the guac and and all that stuff. So, here's the sandwich I like to make. Okay, I'm going to get by this fest. This is the, the, my say favorite things. I'm, ta- I'm literally talking about kitchen utensils and, and the type of I love my pans that I use, my nonstick pans. And you're gonna have to make you're gonna have to let me make you one of these sandwiches one day, dude. I, do I like sandwiches. Huh? Yeah. I like sandwiches. Okay, you ready for this, dude? On sourdough, even. On right? sourdough, yeah. bro. I, so yeah. I I do here's what I do, bro. I make the guac and I and I put salt, pepper, and garlic mixture in the guac and an avocado. I actually cut the avocado, do that whole thing. Okay. And make that noise while you do it. Make Got it, it. To okay. it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm locking it in. I'm going to do this. I painted a picture for you. <laughs> okay, so I do that, and then so now I got this really creamy guac, and it's delicious. I, to- I get the uh, sourdough toast in. Now, I go over to the pan. Let's put, let's put some butter on there. I put two eggs in there, and I just let them do their thing. Don't mix mm. them up. Don't scramble them. Sunny side, man. Yeah, I like sunny side. Yeah, and as mm-hmm. soon as they start to get there, I have a, a spatula that's super thin, and get under there and flip her, and just whoop. And then cook the other side. Now I put that on the I, I take put the guac on the bread, the toast, put the eggs on there, put two thin slices of, of uh sharp cheddar on there, and then just pepper it with some jalapeno slices. And then put the other piece of a toast that's got the guac on it, squish her down, cut that thing. Oh sounds amazing. It's good. It's like uh it's like an upscale avocado toast. Right? It, it is like yeah. a spicy avocado toast. Yes, with the jalapenos. That and sounds amazing. And what's crazy is when it comes down to it. I mean, it is two slices of bread, but it's two eggs. It's some guac yeah. and a little bit of jalapenos. And Easy it is mode. Overwhelmingly filling. That's Easy the thing. mode. All yeah. right, all right. Um, usually, when we do avocado toast, we don't go that far. We do put, we do the avocado, or we do, the, yeah, we get all the. Uh, we basically just mash the avocado. We don't go full guac with it, mm. uh, but we'll put some like hot sauce on it too. That kind of gives it that spice still. Mm, nice. And then, and then we'll do the eggs as well. But we top that with uh, everything but the bagel seasoning. is a is a really good seasoning to put on top of it. Everything but the bagel. It's like a mix of a whole bunch of seasonings in one. Is that the name of the brand? That's the name of the actual like spice, if you will. It's called everything. Everything but the bagel. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we use that for our avocado test. All right. Now let me ask you this, because that sounded spicy. Do you like cooling it down a- afterwards? Maybe not for breakfast. That sounds like a breakfast sandwich in a way. It is. But if you if you have something spicy and later in the day you like to have something a little a little cool it down, maybe a little bowl of ice cream. No. Do you partake in the ice cream? Why I, not? I'm just not a sweet tooth guy. I've just never okay. been into sweet. Did you know you can have ice cream without it being sweet? Did you know you can have ice cream, cream? without it being dairy? Is it just a ice cube? You can get dairyless ice cream. Like, uh, so my wife, my wife has a problem with dairy. Like, she dairy messes her up, right? <laughs> so she'll do it from time to time, but and deal with the consequences. But, but she really likes ice cream, and also a lot of times ice cream, you know, is is not the healthiest thing in the world. So we found a way to have ice cream in a pretty healthy way, in a pretty healthy way. Not saying it's perfectly <laughs> healthy, but a lot healthier than going and getting ice cream from the grocery store. Sure, we make our own non dairy ice cream with more like natural sweeteners like strawberries and fruits and stuff yes yes so we make our own fruit non-dairy ice cream in another ninja device here ninja call us uh it's called the uh creamy ninja makes this thing called creamy and it it makes ice cream and it's the most fantastic thing this is something new that we've been doing uh, it's the most fantastic thing. My wife, she makes the best okay. strawberry ice cream on the planet, and it is super healthy. Right, she I, puts in yeah. protein in it. She's she's like really big on making sure we get enough protein now because you know it's hard to get protein and in, in the, when you're dieting better when you're eating better, right? Uh, and so she puts she puts protein in it, and we get this like protein, pretty healthy bowl of ice cream. And if you're into ice cream and maybe you have issues with dairy, look into it. Creamy from Ninja. It makes ice cream. It's okay. so easy to do. I will look into yeah. this because so uh, 
my my wife's been on a, a pretty stellar health kick for I mean a very long time now, and it's just doing great great things for her and me. <laughs> What's up? And um, <laughs> it's doing it's, it's, I couldn't leave it alone. Uh, it's doing great things for her, and uh, she does like ice cream, and yeah. and she's been having it like not at all. And so for mm. years there, I'd go to water and ice, and I would get the you know I always bring like get like twenty gallons of water and like 60 pounds of ice and i do all that but they also have like cartons of ice cream there and i know what her favorite one is and so sometimes i'm like i'll bring it home because i just like to see her smile but i know that she's like not been doing that for a long time and so now it's like if there's a way to do it to her it's like absolutely acceptable and, and she, believe me she will count everything about what it is and put yep. it into her figures and everything oh yeah my wife's doing the macro thing too yeah 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 and and, and she's eating ice, she's eating this ice cream whilst counting her so macros. what can i do to like you're gonna have to have your wife create a sample for me to take yeah. home to my I wife i can do that yeah your wife made you remember your wife remember your wife made my my wife something for uh christmas or her birthday or one of the two it was like this bath salts thing oh uh, yeah like she handmade it or something yeah. it was so sweet and it's that wife used it like this oh okay yeah, i thought absolutely. you were gonna say it's still sitting there no 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 absolutely it was oh, gone man. like she she, okay. she loved it um so yeah i want to take a sample home and i want to try that because i'm absolutely listening we'll okay hooked up. we'll get you hooked up uh okay. that's that's so we like we like our we've got like three appliances that we tuck back in the corner like hidden in the, behind the refrigerator kind of thing yeah in the kitchen and Two of them are ninjas. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's a great. We have the blender, great... we have the ice cream maker, yeah. and then we have our Keurig is yeah. the is the third one, and we tuck them back in. My wife, my wife actually got these little like um, like sliders, like they're kind of like these boards on wheels. Then we put the appliances on top of that so that we can push it back oh, so they're nice. hidden. Yeah, and then we pull them out. They just slide on the countertop. We pull them out when we need them because like we were trying to just get a nice clean look in the kitchen. My wife's an interior designer, so. You know, she's big on that kind of stuff. So, yeah. so we've got we've got those appliances kind of tucked away in a nice, cool little cubby spot in the corner that nobody can see. But anyway, oh, my other new thing that I got, homie buddy. Okay. <laughs> do you like yourself some smash burger? I do. Yeah. Making my own smash burgers. Yeah, you got I got this smash. griddle thing that you put on top of uh, the actual grill. Yeah. Like your regular grill that you grill burgers on, the open flame. You put this like metal griddle thing on top of, and then I got the little handle with the circular smasher. Oh, that's and great! And I smashed the burger down, and uh, dude, I love it, man. Making the little thin burger yeah. patties is the bomb, and they taste so good. I see. The thing is, the reason I like the smash burger stuff so much, and it's legitimately one of my favorite things, is because I do like to cook. I think you know that I really like. I like to grill. I like to cook. Um, I. I can't, I mean, I can make pretty good burgers now. I have some tricks and everything, and, and especially to learn from Sam, the cooking guy. But typically, it's hard to cook a burger just right because they're thick. Mm -hmm. But you, the thinner they are, the easier it is yeah. to get a nice, even yep. gig. And I and I don't even have the thing that you put on top of your grill. I actually have, like, a separate yeah, you griddle. you have a full thing made the for this, right? The full thing. Like, yeah. it's only a flat top. It's a big, circular flat yeah. top. And it is really cool. And I've used it so infrequently, and it upsets me. But... Uh, that's they, you got me wanting to fire it up and do the smashy smash. Yeah, do it up. Uh, we discovered this new thing to make like tacos, but with the burger patties. So, and it's really cool. It, it's something she saw on like a like a TikTok or something, right? Where when you go to smash the burger, you actually put like a a tortilla, like a burger sized tortilla. What the smash burger is going to be size wise, like street taco sized tortilla. Right. You put it on top of the burger patty before you smash it. And then it basically just becomes like a taco. You can you can then once that's cooked, you can and then it doesn't stick to the smasher either, which is really nice. Um, and then you can like turn it over and kind of fold it up like a taco and just decorate it like a taco. So your taco meat is literally the smash burger. What? It's, it's the coolest little trick ever. Okay, That is cool. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, if to, we're gonna have to do a barbecue, a little grill out, and we'll yeah. and we'll we'll play with some of this stuff. I like it. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. If my wife was in on this podcast, here's one of her favorite things. Um, probably, she's got this like um, it's it's like a tea kettle thing, but it's it's really just for heating water. But it's a it's got like a saucer that it sits on, and that's what heats it. The water. It's mm -hmm. like the most ridiculous voodoo I've ever seen. You fill the, the glass with water, you put it on there, and it feels like you cannot blink before it's boiling. 
Wow. It's crazy how fast it is. Like, it's Ooh. obviously not that fast, but it's, like, super fast. And uh, I think that she would like that. And and it shuts itself off, and it's like, yo, I'm hot enough, man. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's got nice. it all sorted, man. Neat. I like that. <laughs> we're, uh, since we're talking about the, the wife, what my wife likes uh, is the pans that she uses. You mentioned nonstick pan before, but yeah. my wife found, and they're actually called the perfect pan. I believe the brand is Our Place. Uh, we have switched to nothing but those, like from the big the big pots, you know, to just the ones you go on top of your stove to like fry eggs or or whatever. Uh, brown the meat. The perfect pan. It's called the perfect that's pan. That's the brand? Yeah. That's uh, our place is the brand. Our, and they're our called place. the perfect pan. And we've had them now for a couple years. We started with just one. And then it, we realized like if it was dirty or something, we were just like, no, I have to use a regular pan. And, <laughs> and because you know what's going to happen. You cook the food and then you got to scrub it off. And yeah. it's, you know, it's, it, when you're scrambling eggs and stuff and it's sticking to the bottom and stuff. This literally, we stopped using like the cooking spray that you used to have to put on the bottom of pans to make sure the stuff wouldn't cook. Don't have to use it anymore. Like these pans, they're just, nothing will stick to them okay. ever. They're so easy to clean. Also not cheap, but again, it's kind of like Lululemon. You get what you pay for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like we've had these now for, or at least the, the first one we've had for two years now. And, and that like nonstick, you would think over time would wear off and it would start being sticky and it hasn't do you have to is that something that you can go to a store and get it or do you have to online? it's probably like directly from them i am not sure they carry it and like i'm gonna look into that I'm gonna, walmart or whatever you i know? think i'm ready to just completely over yeah we did we ditched our entire pan lineup and replaced it with nothing but these perfect pans were you with me when i got my wife those really nice yep. pans okay so yeah so i remember that because uh it was like Christmas shopping or something. Yeah. And you're like, my wife wants new, the the trays, the little, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I'm talking about like like the pans with the handles that yeah. go on top of the stove. You're talking about the ones you put in the oven yeah. when you're roasting vegetables and stuff, right? The yeah, flat. Like a, like a cookie tray. Cooking, yeah, yeah, cookie tray type yeah. thing. I remember cookie you, sheet. Chicken, yeah. I remember you telling me the story. You're like, my wife wants new cookie sheets. And I was like, well, what's wrong with the one she has? And, and, you're, and you're like, well, it's just that sometimes when they heat up out of nowhere, you just hear this bang. <laughs> <laughs> that was the noise you used. Bang! And I was like, what is that? And, and you're like, it's like they, uh, they, they fold up a little yes. bit. Like the corners turn or something. Yeah. Like the metal just bends yeah. in, while it's heating up. And you're like, well, I want like really good ones that won't go bang! Yeah. The, see, so this this back of this dialogue that we're, we were having is like from over 10 years yeah, ago. It is. And the pans that that were, or the cookie sheets that were before that were really low quality. They were from we were, when we were first married or whatever. And it was my wife who had said to me, can we get new cookie sheets or, you know, for the oven? And I was like, why? What kind do you want? She's like, I want whatever kind doesn't go bung, 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 inside inside the, <laughs> because that's what it do. It would like flip and like, like do all, it was just so terrible. So we got, uh, we got the ones that you and I, because remember I found that they were really nice. You remember? Yeah, they were really thick. thick. They were heavy. Yeah, thick, yeah. heavy. You know, he's not going to make that noise. Still using those. Nice. And, yeah. And they're still in, in good shape, but I, but I just want to. Get her something new. I just want to. It's time, so I'm gonna look yeah. into this now. All right, so it's two to one, three. It's two to two. Creamy, perfect pan, air fryer. What do you mean two to two? Is this a contest? What are you talking well, about? Well, you're convinced me of two things. I convinced you of two. Uh, let's name three. What are you talking about? Creamy. What was creamy? The ice cream maker. <laughs> oh right. Using it. <laughs> using your air fryer. You have an air fryer, but using it, and then I do have an air and fryer. Then the perfect pan. All, all, right. all, all those dealt with cooking for right, some you reason. Three, okay. All right. And I got I'm got Lufa. <laughs> That's why right. Lulu Lemon. I will do Lulu Lemon. You got and me on the Lulu Lemon. You got me on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lulu Lemon and Lufa. Okay. All right. All mine start with Lou. All right. Okay. Okay. Can we talk about technology now? I waited long. All enough. right. Fine. Fine. Jeez, fine. I'm over here jonesing, man. <laughs> I'm over here jonesing. All right. Well, first off, for me, one of the things I use on the daily. Almost all day long. Electronic. <laughs> I'll bleep it out. How, how did he know? Uh, I, <laughs> how did he know? Did I leave it out? Okay. I will bleep it out, baby. <laughs> all right, go ahead. No, uh, Apple earbuds. The oh, yeah. Straight up. I'm not talking about pods. I'm talking about I have a wired set of Apple earbuds that I keep in my ears all day long while I'm at my computer. And they're the only earbuds that do not irritate my ears. I've tried so many different brands of earbuds. 
And those are the ones I come back to. They're literally hanging right there. You see the white the cord? The white ones? The white cord. Everything else on my desk is black, but Apple has it to make everything white. Um, so, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're white earbuds, and they're those are like... From 1912, I think. Like, <laughs> no, they're, those are like super old school wired Apple earbuds. And that's what I keep in my ears all day long. I never feel the need to like switch to a speaker or something like that because my ears are, are sick of having something in them. And they're literally the only earbuds. And now I'm going to say this because everyone's ears are different. So this may not be a good advice for everybody, but for me and my ears, they're the only ones that like fit very comfortably to the point to where I forget I'm wearing them and I can wear them eight hours a day. No issue. I can dig that. I, I don't think I have the, I mean, I thought, I don't know what I have. I have earbuds that I use too, that are wired and it's what I, when but I, but when you with. keep them in, now that you're sitting at your desk with those in like eight hours straight a day, you feel it. Your ears feel, feel any it. kind of discomfort it feels or anything. Fine. They so feel you probably fine. just found ones that are good for yours. Just like I, I did. think so, because mine are the, the ones that have the, um, really, uh, uh, really soft, very malleable rubber tip. Yeah, those irritate me. Now, what about it irritates you? I don't know. Just uh, like inside the the little hole there in the ear, it just kind of gets red and irritated. When Is that I have right? Those in. Okay. Yeah. yeah, not me. Yeah, I need the cold plastic of the <laughs> the Apple You're ones. You're such I a guess. robot. So <laughs> let me ask you this, homie: Have you ever try some proper Beats? Mm-hmm. Yes, um, I do have the wireless Beats that kind of like clip over your ear. Um, I'm talking. Oh, the big old big headset old ones. noise no. canceling. No, he's got the Audio Technica ones that we use for when we have guests and stuff. So I have, and those are pretty nice. Um, I have so mine are the wireless too, and when I turn it on, it goes, and the whole world just goes. Ooh. It's like that's because noise canceling, right? So mm-hmm. it's basically, you know how that works. It records the outside and it inverts the frequency and feeds it to you, so it flattens the frequency. But then you listen to music, and it's just oh, a it's whole butter. New world. It's butter, dude. It's <laughs> butter. Like I literally, I won't. I don't. I won't listen to Tool on it because I have things to do. And if I put on <laughs> Tool, I will do nothing yeah, else. Right? Yeah, it is. It's that. like I'm in the studio with them. However, I will say I can't wear them for over like a half hour because it pinches yeah. my pushes in it on pushes my ears. Ear. Yeah, head. yeah, yeah. I'm with you on that. I don't like headphones at all. Plus, a lot of times, you know, it gives you that, the hair, presses the it hair does. down on top. And if you're going out after, you can just see it. You see where your hair is just pressed down from that band that goes over your yeah. head. I don't like that either. That's why I hardly ever wear headphones. It Only do I wear headphones if there's, if I know I need to focus in on audio big time. I wore those headphones for the, uh, what tur- turned into a seven hour Phasmo stream when i was going for the gold trophy that day yeah yeah i warmed for that because i knew i needed to listen very intently to where the ghost was coming from and every step you know and all that stuff you know how important sound is Mm -hmm. in that game so i put them on for that but aside from that i don't like wearing headphones at all okay i'd have the wireless little beat ones that clip in the ear that i take to the gym those are great for working out yeah those those are also pricey (laughs) Yeah, but don't those those clip ones don't they hurt? They your clip ear? over my ear. Yeah, it, it, I don't like I don't like that. It kind of I don't either. bugs me how it clips on onto your ear at the top there, and that gets annoying after a while. But it's just for a gym session, you know. If you're working out, you typically aren't thinking about a little bit of discomfort on your ear, you know. Something's wrong with my right ear hole because I have I have the wireless AirPods that I'll I like to walk with, you mm-hmm. know. So just pop them in, and those are noise canceling as well. But I pop them in, and the left one fits like a puzzle piece, and the right one, it's, it's like it's, I don't know what's how, it's like it's meant for a dog or something. Like I, I just, it comes, you know, our comes, bodies are not perfectly symmetrical, right? Well, I thought it'd be, <laughs> so, I thought my ear holes would be on the same page. Like this is, this is too much of a difference. Have you tried working out your ear hole? What's to get it up to snuff? <laughs> we we'll get, we'll get something in there to stretch it to so. get it better shape. <laughs> yeah. Something, man. Yeah, you just got a, a weaker ear <laughs> ear hole. Maybe there's uh, another uh, air bud yeah, in there somewhere. It's got a little extra fat in it. <laughs> you know? So you can't fit. I don't know. The, the left ear's been oh, hitting the man. gym and the right one's yeah. too busy drinking yeah. scotch. I don't know. Okay, so let's talk about, I'm going to look at my desk, and uh, we talked about, L, did we talk about the stream deck? We mentioned it. I said, oh, yeah, if I need a numpad, I can we program the stream deck. Talk to me about your road. Um, yeah, so 
I was an avid fan of the Go XLR, which is a, a XLR to USB mixing device. Like these microphones that we're talking into, they have a, a, a XLR cable. They need to go into an audio processing unit. They need to get gain uh, applied to them, and they need to, uh, and then we need to usually convert that into something and plug in the computer so the computer can capture the audio signal. And the Go XLR did that, but it also had a few extra extra bells and whistles to where it had sampler buttons to where you can play the bam, 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 yeah. or whatever you want to put on it. You know, bam, 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 Impulse bam. is a bit of a genius. It turns out it's my favorite one. <laughs> God, um, punch you. And uh, and then it had like the sliders, and you can give uh, extra virtual audio channels, so I can say. I want my game to go into this channel, and I want uh, music to go into this channel, and I want my microphone to go into this channel. You have physical sliders and stuff. And it was a fantastic device. I loved it since the day I got it. And um, and then <laughs> we started this podcast, and we realized that we, we need something that can handle multiple mic inputs. Tango came on the show, and we realized we need something that has three yeah. microphone inputs. Yep. And that's when we realized it's time to, it's time to beef up you know our, our mixing board and and we found this Rode Procaster 2 had just come out the second version of this and we bought it uh, a little bit of investment for the podcast it was $700 that's a beast. and uh we started using it and the more and more i listened to the audio quality the more i thought you know what i think this has a better audio processor than the Go XLR oh and so um, oh. i decided to borrow our roadcaster 2 one day and swap out the go xlr and play with it in the setup and see if i liked it and after a lot of struggle with understanding how it did things differently than the go xlr i came to absolutely love it and then i kind of felt guilty that uh, i was borrowing the podcast one for my personal setup and i bought a second one <laughs> and now we have two we have one for the podcast and one that i use on my desk for my everyday recording and it has everything I need. It has the sliders, has the samplers, and it has um, the audio processing that's in it is fantastic. I monitor myself. I hear myself in real time, zero delay. Uh, and that's the biggest thing is most people don't listen to themselves back uh, when they mm -hmm. have devices like this because there's delay and it can cause speech jamming. Oh, it's the worst. Um, but this has zero delay, um, even with the onboard like processing you know what i mean so um it knows it literally has a button that says i'm using a sure sm7b microphone and it knows exactly how to make it sound better it knows all the the equalizing settings what? that this microphone needs and if i switch to a different kind of microphone the nt1 it knows that one you press that and it's like i know how to make this sound good and it's got all these presets in it it's it's fantastic man it's it's if if you want to splurge for a device like this, if you need a device like this, um, this is definitely now what I recommend the Rodecaster. I mean, Pro I two. think it's a matter of time because the Go XLR has been discontinued. I love my Go XLR, yeah. but when it breaks, I mean, what now? You yeah, know what I mean, so I I think I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and get one of. Them. I mean, they're really really sick. I just I've gotten so familiar with the Go XLR yep. that I I really like it. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's definitely a switch, but um, from an audio quality standpoint. I used to have an extra device called the um, uh, ART. It was a, a tube, a glass tube that it sent my voice through to kind of give it a softer sound. And then once I got this, I realized I didn't need that anymore. So I actually eliminated some extra things in my audio chain and just use this now. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great device. I, I, I can vouch for it for sure. But I will also vouch that once you get it, it get ready to do some research because it literally took me weeks of watching YouTube videos and reading forums and being. Why on does the, it have to be so complicated? Being on the Discord because they are an audio company, not a streamer company. Does that make sense? Like they they aren't building devices. They their road it wasn't b making devices for YouTubers and streamers. They were making devices for audiophiles for people like in the music industry you know what i mean and so their approach is is was not like m to make it easy for what we do it from like oh i need mm. to have virtual channels that plug into obs and stuff like that that wasn't in their mind and so they did things a little weird now they're, they're fixing it now um once they got news that go xlr was on its way out and mainly because the go xlr software support is no longer happening um that they could they could get in this market and now their their developers are working on new drivers and updating the software and stuff to make it easy 
but they they're taking their sweet time with it. I've been I've been keeping my eye on it, waiting for them to to basically fix some of the things that are difficult with it. But I've I've done enough research now. I can I can make it work just like a GoXLR. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's good. It's uh, I like it. I'm sticking with it. I'm I'm it's finally really cool. at a spot now that where I'm like I don't think I'm touching my desk for at least another thirty days. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna try to keep my setup. You're giving yourself way too I'm much. I'm gonna credit. try to keep my setup what it is. I'm I'm happy with it. I've got my stream decks for all the little buttons and things I need to press. I use one stream deck for a lot of editing, and uh, because it shuffles, it's got the little knobs for shuffling. You know, like like professional editing consoles have. You know, they have those knobs for shuffling through timeline. My stream deck can do that. Don't need one of those devices. I use it for um, changing audio volumes. I literally have a button on there that. While we're streaming on Friday night, I can press a button. It drops you and Tango to 50%, mutes my microphone. I can talk to my chat. I can still barely hear you guys, but I can talk to my chat, and they're hearing me over you. And and then I can hit another button. It brings you guys back up to 100% and unmutes me. That's pretty like, cool. I, I'm using all these things to – and then I can, on the fly, I, I have a knob on there that I can twist if the game, game sounds are too loud. So I go into the zombie farm, and the zombies rawr, 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 super loud. I'm like, oh, zip, boom, done. Twist the knob, psh, game sounds down. Done. It's connected to the game sounds yep. on the Minecraft settings? Yep. Absolutely. What? Yep. <laughs> That's insane. That same, makes no sense. I can do the sense. same thing with the in-game voice. I can do the same thing with my mic. I can do the same thing with the music. I can do the same thing with the system audio. So say I'm watching a, a YouTube video or my my uh, alerts are going off. Bing, bing. Too loud. Droop, turn the knob. Done. All right, that is one. So of that's your the Stream Deck things. Plus that uh, that I use that for, and I okay. love it. And it's got it's got uh, those knobs. You press them, uh, you can press them as well. So right now you can see you're staring at it. There's two yeah. bars. You see two bars I above the it. knobs. Yep. That means one bar is for what I hear. One bar is for what the stream hears. Yeah. And you right now, I, you turn the knob. Both bars go at the same rate. I press the button. Can change what I hear. Press it again, change what they hear. That's cool. So I can dial in because a lot of times I have my music super low in my ear to where I can barely hear it. Yeah. But I have it a little bit higher for them so they can actually hear the music. And because otherwise I end a stream and I've been blasted with music the whole stream, I get headaches. Mm. So I use it for for having two different volume levels. It's called a submix, what you hear versus what they hear. And that's able to do submixes. So I use the Stream Deck Plus for that. Um, and that unlocks the virtual audio channels and stuff too. So to be able to s- assign every little thing, like I could have like eight different apps on my computer that all go to a different audio channel and control them independently with that thing. So that's amazing. That is great. While we're on the top of El- Elgato, foot pedals, <laughs> obviously I've boasted about yep. in the past. I've got my foot pedals as well to mute, unmute and save buffer replays. Oh my God. Yep. So, uh, oh, cause the buttons are on the left and right of each one. Yeah, the so middle there's ones three, are resting. There's three. No, there's three buttons per pedal. So oh. my left pedal <clears> alone <throat> is deafen, save buffer replay in the middle, and mute on the right. <laughs> That's what my left pedal. Is your goal does. just to not use your hands at all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Why not? Hey, man, it kind of struck me like we're we're drummers. We we are used to using all four limbs. Yeah. Why not incorporate that into gaming? Uh, during Vault Hunters, I assigned all those to. All the Vault Hunter's special abilities. I was throwing a javelin with my left foot. Like, it was amazing. And that's typically stuff that you would assign, like, <laughs> hotkeys on the keyboard. Control, Alt, Shift, F4, D. You know what I mean? I was uh, throwing a javelin with my left foot. Yeah, that's exactly. a sentence that's never been said before. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm not good at remembering hotkeys, you know, when you have to start assigning all these different crazy key combinations. And Vault Hunters has so many different things in the game that it was going to get out of control yeah. uh, of, like, trying to remember hotkey signings. And so I was like, you know what? Forget it. Um, I can utilize the fact that Windows has basically hidden function keys. Uh, if you have a keyboard that has F1 through F12, well, guess what? F13 through F24 exists. Windows knows that exists, but there's no buttons on your keyboard to use it, which means you're never going to use it. But you can assign it to the Elgato okay. foot pedals. Yeah. You can as- assign it to a Stream Deck button. And now you can Virtual suddenly. Virtual buttons. Yeah, you got 12 buttons you know you're never going to use in any other thing that you can use however you want by assigning them to uh, like hotkey stuff. In software, you know, you can have start stop OBS recordings with F14 
and then make a button on your foot pedal or stream deck to press F14 for you. That's cool. Yeah, so I use that a lot. Like, that's one of my tips I, I recommend if anybody has a stream deck or foot pedals. He or loves whatever. his technology, I people. Do. I do. I'm basically a cockpit <laughs> on my desk. You do, You got... I like my Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Just keep it simple. I yeah. do my Rubik's cube and my poker chips. That's 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 that, that's that's my yeah. mind calming stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I remember it used to annoy me. You just I would hear your chips all the I, time shuffling, especially when you did it in a cube at work. Yeah, oh, I, man. it's crazy that it bugs people because I love that sound. <laughs> and what I like, you should like. Yeah, yeah, just no. like your shit doesn't stink. Hey, now I got your <laughs> asterisk. Sorry. Wait, don't I already have to? Because you probably already did anyway. When we talked about your God, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> All right, I don't want to put any more asterisks on it. So tell us about your favorite things. I like because I like yeah. the fact that you opened my eyes to some things that I'm going to want to give a go. I'm definitely going to stretch the limits of that air fryer. We nice. almost never use it, but you yeah, got me thinking. Yeah. And then your wife, I want a sample of that ice cream to take home. You got it, bud. To my wife. It. All right. Yes, we'd love to hear some of the things you guys use in your daily life that. Uh, we may not know about or we didn't mention anyway. And yeah, throw it in the comments. Helps us out. And engagement. Do it. <laughs> Engagement's Do it. good for the content, uh, for the algorithms. So yeah. Oh, man. Fun one. Fun one. Oh, I like talking nice, about dude. my favorite things. We are <laughs> I know you do. Easy I do one. too. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let us know. Did you do it yet? 